Welcome back! In this edition of Tech Tips, we are going to be covering some basics of shooting and editing video. Given today's environment of digital devices, shooting videos has never been easier. The Youth Center roundups we have been producing are a good example of how you can shoot and edit videos on your own. If you would like to try making your own video project, stop by the Youth Center and you can sign out some of our equipment. We've been using iPads to make our roundups, so this is what we are going to cover. First, you want to shoot some videos. We will start with selecting the camera. It defaults to photo mode, so you will have to select a video by sliding the menu. You will notice that the button turns red. You can switch to the front camera by touching the camera icon in the upper right hand corner. This mode is handy for recording intros and the ever popular selfies. And the final piece of the interface is how you, you select your focal point. You just touch on the area you want to focus on. And always remember, don't take vertical videos. You always want to use all of the space provided in the frame. It just looks better. Now that we know how to select the video camera and the different features, it is time to shoot. A few basic terms about video, framing, and composition is one of the most easy to explain and difficult to master topics in video making. Framing and composition are tools to help you tell the story in your videos. Like any good story, all videos should have at least three parts, beginning, middle, and an end or conclusion. Here are three types of shots. Full. A full shot shows the entire subject's body from head to toe. It's used to give a subject context in their setting. Full shots are sometimes used as establishing shots. An establishing shot tells you where the story takes place, also known as a setting. Medium. A medium shot shows the subject from about hips or waist up. It's useful when a subject is conveying information and always allows you to still see them interacting with their environment. With the medium shot, the setting has already been established in prior shots and more emphasis is being placed on the subject. Close. A close shot, also called a close-up, focuses on the subject's face. You don't want to give too much headroom. Bring the shot in close to show the head and neck and a bit of the shoulders. This type of shot places emphasis on the subject's facial expressions to help convey the emotion in a story. If you zoom in even more, you can get what's called an extreme close-up. For example, a shot of subject's eye or mouth will show and emphasize an expression during an important moment. Now that we've covered our basic types of shots, let's discuss where on the image frame we place our subject. The rule of thirds is a method of composing your shots. Imagine that your frame has lines running through it, two horizontally and two vertically. Together, these lines divide the frame into nine squares where the lines intersect are points where you want to put your subject. Aesthetically, this will make your shots more interesting to the eye. Generally, it's boring to perfectly center your subject. You want them a bit more to the left or right of the center. This also applies with horizon lines. Don't center the horizon so it divides the frame into even top and bottom halves. Instead, have the horizon run across the lower and upper third of the image frame. Finally, a little about movement. Moving camera shots physically advance or change the position of the camera. However, when there is movement of the camera, the relative position of everything within the frame changes constantly. This method replicates closely our expectations of movement. The key is to stay slow and steady. If the camera is moved too quickly, it can result in shaky, blurred, or nauseating inducing videos. With a little practice, you can be shooting like a pro in no time. Don't forget to try different points of view. Some of the most interesting video comes from putting your camera in different angles and heights. So now that you have your video and shot and what to do with it, there are almost as many video editing options as there are cameras. We are going to cover iMovie since it allows us to shoot and edit on the same device. When you open the iMovie, you have three menu options. Video allows you to select and play any video clip you have saved on your, your device. Projects are where you'll be working. It allows you to start a new movie or trailer. We will be creating a new movie. The trailer option allows you to select a Hollywood style movie trailer from the list of templates where you add your own video clips. Let's get started. 
First, we are given some options on the th on a theme for our movie. You can play the samples and see what they look like. Let's go with a familiar one. Now we get to start adding media. You can add video, photos, and audio. You have access to all of the saved videos, photos, and music on the device as well as some stock music and sound effects. You're even given the ability to view the media before adding it to your movie. Once you have found your clip, add it to the timeline. We will add a few clips for the demonstration. The red line represents the playhead and the image shown top right of the screen is the frame that the playhead is over. This playhead is stationary. You move your project by dragging it to the left or the right. You can further fine tune your edit straight from the timeline. Tap any clip to bring up yellow handles. Use them to add or remove parts of the clip from, or your project. Your currently used part is still linked to the main clip you took away from the library. To zoom in or out, move two fingers away or closer together. To change the order of the clips, tap and hold on one. This removes it from the timeline. With a finger still touching the screen, you can move that clip from another position. If you release it while it's out of the timeline, it's removed from the project. You can also perform more complex edits, like inserting a new clip in the middle of an existing one, move the playhead over the clip, then select it. Now swipe down the playhead to cut your clip in two. You can now insert a new clip in between those two parts. Finally, let's take a look at the titles and music. You can add text to help describe the events or location of the movie. The titles affect the whole clip, so you may want to split longer clips unless you want the title to run the entire time. Once you have selected the clip you want to title, you have few options. Open, middle, or closing. These defaults are a selected theme. We can choose from the rest of the options with our theme button. Then you can simply touch, type, to add whatever you want. For the music, you can turn on the music associated with your selected theme. Or add some things from your personal library. If you're having troubles getting the music to play in the preview mode, simply select the movie clip and move it to the foreground. When you are happy with your movie, tap the arrow from the top left hand corner. Here you can name the movie Fawn. You can post it directly to social media. Well, we hope you enjoyed this edition of Tech Tips. If you want to try shooting ed and editing one of your own videos, stop by the U Center where you can sign out one of their iPads to use if you don't have one of yourself. Bye! Bye.